saw Howard today, and when I came back, I was shattered. Like some part of me um, has been changed forever since I've been there. And and I don't say that lightly. I think when you witness the kind of atrocities that are going on right now in the Congo, and I, I just want to just give a few examples to get uh, it's difficult material to hear, but it's also really important to hear it because the connection to an atomic and the connection to the middle of the Congo, just before it starts, is pretty much 20% of the explained of those minerals. Well, the Congo produces 20% of the world's natural and coal tax. And it is that um, desire and need for minerals which drives the war in the DRC. So there's a direct linkage to um, minerals, the plundering of minerals, and the raping of women, which I'll get to. And I don't understand the claim what that is. Coltan is a, a mineral ore that is processed into tantalum, and tantalum is a powder, which then is goes to the heat resistor capacitors, which go into our cell phones, our iPods, um, and other various electronic devices, which then get sold on the world market. And the mining process that is undertaken um, in a lot of the mines in Eastern Congo, where the prevalence of violence is, is mining where militias use sexual violence and torture and, and all forms of violence to control the mines, dominate the mines, and dominate the villages where the mines are. 20%. Where 20% of that mineral is. The yeah. idea is to create a blood diamond kind of situation. Exactly. Well, it, there is a blood diamond situation. It's already been created and it's gone on for 12 years um, where 6 and 8 people have died. Um, it's estimated now that hundreds of thousands of people have been raised. That exact figures are now because some people can get raised in villages where the bodies and everything discovered or where they die um, years later because of AIDS due to those rates. But I, I just want to give a few examples of, uh, of what's going on there. Um, you know, I, there's a hospital called Tansy Hospital that Boston Reggae runs. And at the hospital at any given time, there are between two and 300 women who are rape survivors. And they have something called fistula, which is a hole inside them, which they get because so many. Um, Penises, so many um, sticks, so many objects have been shoved inside them. And I'll just tell one story of a girl who lives in my heart because I've stayed very connected with her and I'm on my way back there next week. Um, she's an 80 year old girl when the conflict just happened and when she came to her home, they took her father in one direction, they took her mother in another, and her in the third. Um, they held her for two weeks malicious. They raised her um, every day, all day long, a whole group of men. When she returned, she had a sister that she was seeing and pooping on herself, so she was taken to the hospital. Her mother had been raised as well, her father had been murdered. Um, when she got to the hospital, um, Dr. Wendy said that she was too young, she didn't have enough tissue in her body to survive surgery in an effective way. Um, so here she is, she's a gorgeous little girl, um, just beautiful seeking spirit, who pees and poops on herself all day. And you can imagine what that does to a little girl in the community. She's been exiled, she's, she's humiliated, she's, she's been made fun of. Um, we're now sending her to school, and um, one, of, one of the first experiences I had with her is that I went to hug her after our interview, and I, I put her on my lap, and um, she wanted to get away, and I said, it's okay. And I realized that no one had hugged her since she'd been raped, but they were so scared of her peeing on her. And when she got on my lap, she peed on me. And I actually tell you, it was one of the most blessed moments of my life. I felt we kind of made me fond together. And it's not about the link between the minds and what companies can do or self aware companies can do. What is the link between the minds and what the violence is? This is obviously, the Congo is a mineral rich and rich in many, many ways. Yes, it's the sixth richest resource country in Africa. And um, it has all kinds of, of, of minerals. But what happens in the mines is that the militias, and there are many. Types of militias. There are militias that are former genocidaires from Rwanda. There are the Mai Mai, which are local. There are um, Rwandan troops. There are Ugandan troops. There are all kinds of militias that control the mines. But the way they control the mines is in two ways. One, they either come into a town and they rape women and destroy communities by raping women in front of their husbands, forcing sons to rape their, their mothers. Um, or we just essentially doing gang rape in front of the community so that the communities are fractured and they flee and they leave the village and then the militias take over the mines and occupy them and sell and, and, and export those and other minerals. Or they use sexual violence as a tactic to import slave labor, getting people to work at very, very non, no, no to minimal wages, um, pay taxes that they don't have to pay, or just basically control the mines in general by raising up a, a, a husband's 
like hurt him or raising a child in front of his father or just demoralizing men and humiliating men and eviscerating their identities and self esteem. And then what happens is they export those mines, um, export the mineral coal in, and they send it to the east where, where it's turned into powder and it goes into capacitors which contain the energy in our cell phones, in our iPods, and it gets shipped to Europe and America where we consume those products. What are companies doing? Well, in the past, there's been a kind of uh, just a general. You get folks in in South Africa, Australia, you could just buy those and stop buying. Can you stop that? That's not a good idea. A boycott would not be successful. One, it hasn't worked in the past. But two, it would actually put many people out of employment. There are 10 million people who are employed in those mines. And a boycott would actually increase the violence because it would, all those people who are working now would then become part of the mission and it were more violence on women. So a boycott's not the solution. The solution is for electronic companies and people who run companies to start becoming aware of human rights violations and start demanding that the roots of the minerals are traceable and that we know the beginning of the process, the middle of the process, 